we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 46 and I am truly grateful. And I thought what I'd do uh, before I go into my next subject, which is about a dying nation. <laughs> anyway, but in the front here, I want to point out two people have stood out. Now there's been others, but I haven't seen them yet but anyway because I have felt the impact um, and what I'm talking about is is a good talk radio so good talk radio is our radio station and we've had it for years and when the COVID thing came along um, a few months ago Sherry and I were uh, my wife uh, going through and saying okay we're gonna money's gonna get tighter because um, she uh, uh, isn't working right now and we had to take care of her mother and so we um, her severance pay was over with and so we knew our income was going to drop so we started um, months before actually the COVID's uh, quarantines came along cutting costs on everything we could whether it was uh, uh, television um, cable services to all kinds of little things that we had that we kind of had a lot of wasteful spending and certain pieces of software I was subscribed to. Anyway, we, we actually did a really good job at that. But one of the other things was the radio station. Now that is paid by our company, which is in a sense comes out of our pocket too. And it's radio stations are not a big money maker. Um, our podcasts actually do pretty good um, through uh, affiliate marketing stuff. But uh, so we decided, and it broke my heart, to shut down the radio station because you have to pay for the music license and the software to run it and all that stuff. And uh, it broke my heart. And um, I was reluctant, but it was the right thing to do. And so at the beginning of the month, I announced we shut her down, and we did. And... Uh, uh, you wouldn't believe what it took to get it back on, but I'll short. Sure. So as time went on and, and certain people, I, I, cause I have shows that are affiliated all over the United States and outside of the United States that play through our station and, and we're like a family. Now there's others that weren't and that kind of <laughs> caused us to change our format anyway. Um, but a couple of people really stood out. And um, finally, I was talking to a new radio station that was just starting out and called me up. And I spent like an hour on the phone with them. And uh, they uh, um, wanted some help and advice. And so as I was talking to them, I'm just like all these years of experience that we got having a radio station, and all that stuff. Um, my heart was even more broken. And it finally, after the guy didn't even realize he did this to me, but it was his conversation. This guy was out of Palm Springs, um, convinced me we shouldn't shut down Good Talk Radio. So I turned it back on, but I made some big changes. I went with only uh, um, syndications that were really partnered with us. And there really were some who really partnered with us. So I dropped a lot of shows and uh, uh, ones that were kind of using us and, 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 you know, we thought it'd be cool cause there were big names and stuff. And it, it was a one way relationship. So this was my opportunity because when we shut down the software, it was a cloud system. We lost everything that we had programmed already, which meant we had to program good talk radio from scratch again, had to load over 250, um, um, songs and um, music that we own commercials, demos, all kinds of stuff. You know, it took actually two and a half days nonstop for me to get that thing back online. And of course we had to renew our license and we got that fired up. 
and a couple of people were ecstatic that we came back on. And so uh, two people in particular, and there's others that have been very helpful too. Um, so uh, every one of our syndications we appreciate. Syndications, by the way, if we're not sure if you know what they are, is when somebody maybe has a show or a podcast and they've designed it to be on radio. Um, they contact radio stations like us and then they negotiate and find a way to get their show on our radio station because we reach a vast amount of people. And so uh, Good Talk Radio does that. And uh, um, anyway, so we get this fired up. A um, couple of people come back. Well, I want to be welcome. You shut down. You said you weren't going to shut down. There's more sentimental reasons to the whole thing um, that we fired it back up. And those are the kind of people we dropped. And it's like, really, the question is, when you're with a radio, and I just did a video about this. When you're syndicated, it isn't all about you just getting your radio show out. You know you've got a show. You're not doing us a favor. You're, you're doing a partnership. And many of our syndications understand that. But two people, I told them that, you know, uh, we weren't financially hurting. We were just being financial, financially responsible and thought it would be a good idea that we save our costs. Anyway, but um, we decided otherwise. Anyway, so I want to talk about Don Suhan, who has a show called Praise the Lord. And I actually did an interview on him on Ranger Rob Has Your Back, um, who does a lot of great things for people. And yes, he runs his own little Christian radio show that I run on Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. on Sundays, which I just expanded to Saturdays too, um, because he gets it. One is, um, no, I don't play Christian music throughout the whole radio station. But Sundays are very special to us because we set up a couple of uh, great faith-related shows on Sundays to get everybody off to a great Sunday. Now, I believe the Sabbath is actually on a Saturday. but <laughs> So uh, I actually expanded. I, I went ahead and put Praise the Lord on Saturday mornings, too, at 7 a.m. Um, and I may actually put some other folks on Saturday mornings because truly I know the Sabbath is on Saturdays. So anyway, um, but Don gets on his website and starts, and he knows that and we've told people our Ranger Rob Poopy Bags is really what we try to use to help fund this stuff because instead of doing a bunch of commercials and begging for people to advertise and all that stuff, we just create a product and, then, um, and a useful product for most people that have dogs. And um, also we, you know, we have our hats and stuff like that. So I get these, um, suddenly I get these little bursts of sales that we see. Um, and we're not tremendous, but one day we got 12 poopy bags sold in a day and eight yesterday. And it was just out of the blue, like what's causing this? And it turns out I've got not one, but two people who really got the idea of like, you know what? We really do need to help Good Talk Radio and Easy Street. And, uh, they went out and they started, they didn't buy them themselves, but uh, Don actually bought one of our Easy Street hats and we really appreciate that. Um, and and our stuff, all of our stuff is on Amazon now. And uh, so Don, Don put our poopy bags on his site and uh, I don't know directly if they were the cause of the sales, but I'm thinking they probably were. But everything counts in one way or another. Things slip in front of people, and then, and if the right people endorse things, uh, really helps. So our sales um, have had little kicks ever since we started the radio station back up. Along with you know we're doing our own advertising and marketing, and then also um, so Don's show is called Praise the Lord. So if you can catch that on Good Talk Radio at 7 a.m. on Arizona time. Uh, he really does a great show, and he's been devoted to it for years. And he's just a really nice guy. And in fact, go visit his Facebook and message him and just say hello, and, and you will meet a nice friend, a good person. And then the next person was Mike Myers, not the guy from um, uh, SNL. But uh, Mike Myers also has his own show. It's semi-faith related, but different. 
and it's, it's a lot of fun. He does it early in the morning. He's in the East Coast, and uh, he does his show daily, every single day, seven days a week, never skips a beat. Um, and uh, he also kind of got on our bandwagon and started helping push our uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags, and he makes fun of me. He calls me Rob Poopy Bag Scribner. <laughs> and, and he can do that all he wants. And uh, we're actually good friends. And he's done everything he can do to get the word out of uh, our product, knowing that it helps support the radio station. So no, this show isn't soliciting, by the way. No, it's pointing out what people can do when they really want to. And uh, I just want to make sure that those two people know how much I'm grateful to. I am grateful to all of you who listen to our show and I'm grateful to the other people that do things with our products. We do have other stations that do stuff. Uh, the shuffle does uh, stuff for our Ranger Rob poopy bags and uh, a couple of other folks uh, that are fairly new to the station are just getting on board uh, next, uh, what they call uh, next week, past week news is a brand new state uh, station with us being syndicated who also is thrilled to death to uh, uh, run our Ranger Raw Poopy Bag commercials and stuff. And the point to this whole segment of this particular part of the show is to say thank you to those people and the other ones out there that we haven't had the chance to uh, put up on the show here. I am so grateful and our listeners that listen to Good Talk Radio are grateful and I cannot um, express how um, important and how thankful we are for what they've done for us and, and, and helped us cover the bills profit wise. No, we're not talking about profit. We just want to cover the cost and with your help, their help, everybody else's help. We're here. We're back stronger than ever <clears throat> and we appreciate that and I hope that's something that um, when people are doing things for other people and they were motivated on their own and we need to do the same thing for others too, uh, either not just during this COVID thing. Um, when you see a business that you really like, especially a local business, how important it is to support them and help them. And, uh, when you get really good service from some waitress or waiter, to really take good care of them and, and tell them how much you appreciate it. Just like when you go to the grocery store and your cart's all cleaned up, do you take the time to the lady that's sitting there or guy that's sitting there that are cleaning them to say, you know what, I really appreciate you did this. I know it's your job, but I really, you, and it may not seem significant, but I am grateful that you um, touched up my shopping cart so I to be a little safer. Just little things like that are amazingly powerful. And I just wanted to point that out. So Don, Mike, and others that syndicate with Good Talk Radio and all the new people out there that are coming on board with us and listening to our shows, people are buying our poopy bags or buying our hats. Thank you. We truly appreciate it. Would you like better radio with great talk shows and great music? and less garbage good talk radio is your choice we have great programming great music and a great attitude we love our country we love our listeners good talk radio okie dokie we are back uh welcome back to easy street here and i wanted to talk about our dying nation at least that's what it feels like so I'm asking you in the comments right off the bat, does it feel like uh, the dream, the, the America we used to know is falling apart? For example, what's really driving me crazy is you watch a commercial and you watch, uh, oh, maybe someone in a concerts and concerts and people are yelling and screaming and dancing and having a good time. Is that gone? What about uh, conventions or going to a casino or watching a show or dancing, 
nightlife, people, side by side, enjoying and having fun. Is that gone? Little things, church, um, movies, things like that. Even when this is gone, have we created something that is not fixable? Um, I personally think, if you have faith, men, women, people are meant to be social, meant to gather. Even if it might cause us, I mean, when we gathered before, if someone had the flu, we could probably catch it. If someone had some other stuff, we could have caught it. It's always been there. And the statistics from this COVID stuff shows that it's no different, if not even less than some of those other things I just mentioned. But because of the media and the hype and the politics behind all this, we may have just destroyed some of the most important things that people rely on. And that's being a part of a community, doing things in groups. I mean, how do you avoid it? Schools, churches, gatherings, concerts, golf tournaments, how do you get away from that forever? To me, that's killing our nation. Not to mention what we've done already to our economy. And with the economy as bad as it's going to get and food shortages, how's that going to affect other families, whether it's problems with money? depression, stress, how's that going to come out? And that's harder to measure. How's that going to measure against American health? Is all this worth it? Now, the reason I'm really bummed out is it's been the, uh, we went to the first of the month and then they all, most states are going, let's keep going for another 15 days. Can you imagine, can you just try to stand in other people's shoes that own businesses, the little barber shop, the guy you go to, the salon you might go to, the little hobby shop, the guy with a little grocery store, and they can't open, and they have no income, and most likely they didn't get unemployment, even though they said some of them would try to help them do it. They're not getting it. In fact, it's been over five weeks for me and my wife, and we haven't gotten ours yet because of little hiccups. Nothing bad. It's just the bureaucracy and timing. Luckily, we put some money aside before all this happened, so we're going to survive. But what about those people who have tighter budgets than we do? And if you're a business owner, you may not even be getting anything. And then when they're saying, well, they can get a loan. Who wants a loan? If you own a little business, do you want to actually have a loan too? Once you get fired back up? Our nation is dying. And we need to change our mindset. We need to change our paradigm. We need a paradigm shift to being normal again. Normal means being together, being in groups, get rid of this paranoia. And the media is going to keep feeding it. And then every time a doctor comes out and tells us like, uh, this is like, like every other virus comes and goes and, and it, it, they get shut down. Like there's these media wants us to be in this misery because it's newsworthy. It makes ratings. We've got to step up. We cannot keep letting people push us around. We need to let 
our nations know that we cannot be driven like this anymore. We need to be independent. We need to fight back, push back, whatever it takes to get back to what semi-normal would be. In the comments below, tell me, are you going to, do you think you're going to be forever thinking you shouldn't be around people? Are you going to be forever paranoid of germs? One of the biggest things I ever learned as a kid is roll around in the dirt, get sick, holding and and your body will be strong and fight back. And I have been a really healthy person. And when I get colds and flus and stuff like that, they go fast. I've never been a germaphobic kind of person. We can't live in a bubble. One of the things they're saying is like, okay, so you love your children. You don't want to let them get exposed to anything. So what are we going to do? Lock them in a room? Never let them leave? Never let them go outside? Never let them be with other kids? Never let them touch things? Never let them explore? Never let them travel? Is that what we're going to be now? If I go shopping, I can't touch anything. I can't read a label. If I go bowling, I can't touch the bowling ball. How far is this going to go? And, and what's really important about this is it's up to you. Our minds, our mindset is we're getting brainwashed into this paranoia against one another. It needs to go away. We need to realize standing side by side with people is okay. And yes, there is drawbacks to that. It's always been that way for thousands and thousands of years. We have to gather. We have to be a community. That's our life. It's our livelihood. It's built in. It's really going to be important that all of us shake off this paranoia, shake off this media crap. Realize that, yes, some of us could get sick. Some of us could even die from stuff. But we can't stay locked in our houses or our rooms. We can't put our kids in bubbles. Life is not meant to be that way. Humankind is not meant to be that way. It's up to us to stand up and fix it. Don't let the media, don't let those paranoid one or two percenters keep us from living. Please, in your comments below, tell me what you're going to do to get back to normal. Or do you think this is the new normal? You want it this way? You know that these checks from the, that are being sent to us and this extra stuff on our unemployment is not going to last. We have to work. We have our livelihoods. We need to be accountable for ourselves. I want to pay my bills. I want to meet my responsibilities and accountability. I don't want the government to do it for me. I want the structure and I want to be a, a country of laws, but I don't want to be ran. So in the comments below, please give me your thoughts on this subject. Seriously, when she wakes up, I've got a surprise for her. She better have some Ranger Rob poopy bags. Have a better experience with dog waste bags. Available at Amazon. Hi guys, we are back. want to uh, thank you once again for listening to Easy Street. Uh, please leave your feedback and comments. Um, please be professional if you do. Hey, you know, look behind me. Don't you? kind of miss this kind of stuff yeah babbling water <laughs> most of our parks are closed 
Some states are opening up, though. This is what we need. Uh, besides needing people, needing to be in groups, needing to break our bubbles, we need this, too. <laughs> Just thought I'd bring that up. So uh, my little babbling work, I'm going to keep running there in the background. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, uh, it's still important that all of us are grateful when we <clears throat> are able to have a roof over our heads, able to feed ourselves. Some people are able to hold on to their jobs through this time. And uh, it's easy to get complacent. It's easy to complain. It's easy to get paranoid. It's easy to let the media drive us crazy. I really suggest you start watching alternative news. You can still watch your other stuff. Local news is not as bad as, say, some of the national news and stuff. But um, still, it can get out of hand. But you do need the second opinion, just like they ask you to do with doctors. Uh, go get signed up for Blaze TV or, uh, or some of the other uh, outlets out there and, and get the real... Get a balance of all sides of things. Then make your own independent decision and then be accountable for yourself. And always for all the laws, all the things our declaration has given us for freedom and whether you agree with them or not, to leave them in place and leave them alone. Most people are good people rights freedom of speech of all sides being able to debate things out and be opposing is good when done right having our own uh, uh, being a right to bear arms there's a reason for that we can't make laws to help people that are mentally ill we just need to make laws to help identify people that are mentally ill. So, uh, you know, and things like that. Keep our laws, our freedoms, our liberties open and free. And use common sense of what really helps a situation. Getting rid of guns or eliminating certain speech. Things like that are not the solution. Common sense accountability for yourself, not letting government be our advocate all the time. If you don't like something, you turn to station. If you don't like guns, don't buy a gun. If someone does something bad in speech or guns or anything like that, one is really analyze it. It's not the gun. It's the person behind the gun, the person behind the speech. Those are the people we need to find ways to help. So anyway, guys, thank you for listening. I'm Rob Scribner. Till next time, bye. bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.